All right, 1.4 is talking about continuity and its consequences. And the first thing I'm going to do is not do what I normally do. I'm not going to define what any of that means. I'm just going to ask you a real life question. Think about the following real life functions, each of which is a function of the variable time. We have the height of a falling object, the amount of money in a bank account, and the cholesterol level of a person. And the question says, again, without telling you exactly what I mean by continuous, which of these functions are continuous and why? Any thoughts? That is perfect, Grace, and Grace is exactly right. So the idea of the falling object, imagine you drop the ball off of the cliff and it falls to the ground and it bounces and stuff, whatever, later or whatever, whether it bounces, maybe it doesn't bounce, maybe it's something that doesn't bounce. But it's continuous, right? It follows the same path. It can't make any jumps in the graph like you saw in some of our pictures that we've had. It simply has to fall in a continuous way. It may fall fast, it may fall slow, it may be thrown and fall at sort of a parabola angle or something, but it will do so in a smooth way. Um, same thing with the cholesterol. It may jump up and down really drastically or whatever, but it's still going to do it in a way that doesn't skip any values. The problem with the bank account is that when your bank account um, is actually active in the way most of ours are, when you put a check in, it jumps from $100 in your bank account to $300 or whatever. And it was never 200 in the middle there, right? It, never, it didn't do it in a smooth way. It jumps around because of the way that we use money and checks and, and drafts and things like that. Does that make sense? All right, so thinking about that then, our actual definition of continuity says the following. For a function f defined in an open interval containing x equals a, we say that f is continuous at a when the limit of the function is actually equal to the function of the, uh, the x value a. In other words, when we are able to plug in the value, or when the limit exists at the value, we have this ability to plug the value in. And if that happens, then it's continuous. Now we saw some situations in the last section where we weren't able to plug in the value. First we had to do some algebraic manipulation, right? We had to do something before and cancel something out. Well in those cases we ended up with holes in the graph, right? Those holes in the graph made things not continuous. We had a location where we did not have this property. We didn't have the x value able to be plugged in. If we're not able to plug that x value in, if that's not possible, then it is discontinuous at that value could be discontinuous because the whole could be discontinuous because it's an asymptote, but it is discontinuous. All right? All right, so we'll pause here for today, and we will pick up with the examples on this idea next time.